Good morning. Welcome to the men's Bible class. I'd like to thank the radio station for this a lot of time, but most importantly, <laughs> I want to thank God. This morning we come to praise and worship. Lewis, can you do some word prayer, please? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come here today, Lord, rejoicing for another day that you've made it. Father, for we know you made it. We didn't make it. And we know you have a perfect plan for today, Lord. And we thank you for uh, loving us. We thank you for leaving us here upon this earth. We thank you for working through us and filling us with your spirit. And, and Lord, it's just uh, uh, we rejoice to await the rain that has fallen here upon your dry earth, Lord. And we give praise and we give thanksgiving for that. And, and just thank you for any more that you uh, you send our way. And Lord, we ask you to be with us here this morning, that in all things that are said and done here, that you would be pleased. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lewis. I appreciate that prayer. I hope everybody's having a wonderful morning this morning. How about that rain? What kind of rain did we have? How about the Lord is so good. Gave us exactly what we needed when we needed it. One point I was listening to Daryl and I were talking to this a while ago. We were actually listening to the forecast and we may be blessed to get a little bit more of it. So that's wonderful. But if it stays like that, that's pretty nice too. I hope everybody's having a, a good weekend. It's uh, kind of beneath the holidays or everybody's trying to get back into their routine or our rut, whatever you call it. And it's going and uh, it's good. It's good to get going again. I uh, was talking with uh, one of the daughter units the other day, Heidi, and uh, she received a new Bible for Christmas. And she was talking to me about it. She was, at, she was looking at the outside cover, and the outside cover had some absolutely gorgeous etching. It was a just beautiful look at it. It's the English Standard Version. And it's just gorgeous Bible. But I reminded her, and said, it's what's inside that camera. I mean, the outside can look pretty good. I'm one of those persons I love books. I can just stay in a bookstore for days. I love just picking up books. I love feeling them. I love looking through them and reading them. But in the Bible, it's the Word that's important. That's what's unbelievable. When we start in there, we, just, we, we start with Genesis. We go through Revelations. We see the history of everything that's happened before us. We hear all of God's promises. We read the story of Jesus Christ and everything that through his life that we're promised as we receive him as the Lord and Savior. And I told her one of the first things I told her, I said, look up uh, Proverbs 4, 20 through 22, and I'll read those for you. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22 reads, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are alive to those to find them, and health to all the flesh. Those are pretty good promises. Can you imagine just reading that Bible, what one Bible, the Word, can do for us? Health, the calm, the healing, life. Can I read the Bible? See if that doesn't do anything for you. Which kind of leads me a little bit to where we're going to go a little bit this morning. I started out thinking about this during the week, and I'm going to start in Jude. And Jude is toward the end of your Bible. And if you'll read in Jude, the verse 3, it says, Beloved, while I was still very diligent to write to you concerning your common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. Contending earnestly for this faith that has been given to us. Make me, as we come into a new year, Catherine talked last weekend about reconciliation trying to renew our relationships that may have a little tear in them or dealing with people we haven't talked with in a long time, bringing ourselves back together with our family members and friends. But this is also, as we truly believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, shouldn't we contend for that faith? Should we just sit back on our walls and say, man, that's really cool, thank you so much. You know, if you get into the book of Revelation, he talks about that, Jesus talked about that, or during, during, uh, during his vision, uh, if you get into 3.14, John says, And to the angel of the church, the lack of safety is right. These things said he, I'm in the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. How many of us are neither cold nor hot? How many of us receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and 
Savior and do no more. How many of you go to church today or you get there, go to, maybe go to your Sunday school class, maybe show up at 11 o'clock to sit there for an hour until you get to lunch? We need to contend for that thing. We need to be earnest about it. We need to have a passion inside of us that, that cannot be driven away by anything. Part of our prayer today is to be, Lord, ignite the fire inside my heart that drives me closer to you, that wants me to be closer and closer to you. Isn't that unbelievable? How can you sit there? And we should be able to go into our churches and sit waiting on our pastor to lay a word on us. We should be rolling that door, just jumping up and down, waiting to receive Jesus Christ, praying that he joins us there and that he speaks through our pastor. The Holy Spirit fills the whole chapel and there's healing for everybody. There's life for everybody. There should be an unbelievable passion. If we truly believe that Jesus Christ died for our lives, for our <coughs> eternal lives, does that not make you happy? Does that not put passion in your heart? Don't you want to try to get a little bit closer to that man? I was reading a little bit more. If you get into the book of Luke, I think it's around the 10th chapter. It deals maybe in 30. It talks about these two ladies, Mary and Martha. And when Jesus came to their home, they went into the living room and, and turned off the big DVD. Turned off the big screen. Jesus sat down and started to talk. And Mary sat at his feet. Whatever you say, Lord, I'm just sitting here listening. Martha got up and went in there and started you know, fixing some snacks. And she got upset with Jesus when she said, I can't believe my sister's in there here and I'm doing all this work. And these are all in my words. And he says, lady, sister, Mary's got it right. She's listening to what she needs to listen to. You can kind of blow it up. Shouldn't we all want to sit at the feet of Jesus Christ? Shouldn't we all want to be just sitting there gleaning whatever he wants to give to us and just, just soaking it all in? Can you imagine being one of the 12 disciples walking with Jesus for three and a half years? You know, we, we're blessed. We do a uh, Easter pageant. Come Easter now. And we start getting ready for that thing about maybe six weeks before, two weeks, two months before. And we actually have some practice. And basically it's the life of Jesus Christ. And part of the lives of the disciples follow him around from place to place. And they hit highlights in the Bible about certain things. And, and they go from there. But we have the opportunity to relive those moments. And if you've ever been on the side of the hill with us, the idea of following Jesus and or being disciples is something pretty spiritual. Just for that time, that's kind of make-believe, but not in our hearts. Everything Jesus has done for us is not make-believe, it's a real deal. We should contend for that faith. We should not let anything block our way to Jesus Christ. There are so many things out in the world today that try to get in this way. The girl I was talking earlier, and he said, believe it or not, there's people out there looking, I think there's going to be something that they can convict me of being a Christian. They will convict me of being a Christian. Will they convict you today of being a Christian? Can you contend for the faith of Jesus Christ? Are you going to let something get in your way and say, no, that's not a real deal? Are you going to go to church today at 11 o'clock and just sit there and get less time? Milky Way, maybe? Jesus, um, Jesus is a bread of life. He gives us all we need. He gives us, he fills or he fulfills our thirst. He feeds us the food and nourishes our body. He is health. He is healing. He is life. It's inside of that beautiful book. It's all that matters, honey. And I talk to myself when I say that. It's the word that's important. It's the word that's beautiful. I got a guy that wants to come up and talk a little bit about the word in Jesus Christ, and I'll let it go. Dear Lord, thank you Joe. Uh, I'm going to go on. You know, uh, I too enjoy that uh, time we spend up on the hill. 
morning with some of my heart, there's a portion of, the, of that walk with Jesus that we don't portray up there. And uh, it's, uh, it comes from an idea of living a resurrected life. You know, uh, not too long ago I said in a funeral where the pastor that was uh, doing the preaching at the funeral, or New Year, whatever you want to call it, uh, he had twice his heart had stopped beating and he had died. And they resuscitated him. And uh, the first time the experience was not as, as spiritual as the second, but the second time he, he had an encounter uh, with the light in, the, in a dark place. And his life was forever changed. He, he said it, it even changed the way he preached. It changed his, his life, the things that were important to him. Uh, and, you know, we, um, we have the ability uh, in Jesus to, uh, to live a life such as this. You know, I was thinking about Lazarus being resurrected from the tomb after being dead for four days. And how the Pharisees were out to kill him because he was a testimony of a resurrected life. And you know what we don't read a lot about the testimony that Lazarus had, but I can only imagine what what kind of life Lazarus lived after Jesus Christ resurrected him from the dead. Yesterday I was uh blessed to be in a meeting where a bunch of spirit filled men and women were were uh, worshiping. And uh there was a fellow there that, that was wrestling in, in his heart of, of, of living a life on this earth unworthy. You know, he had this, he had this uh, cloak of humility to a degree that it, it kept him from, from living a resurrected life. It kept him from having an understanding that even though we live on this earth, and, and at one time we were of, of fleshly born, uh, at enmity or at odds with God, sinners, unsaved, destined for hell, and filthy rags. And that life is, is exactly what it is. Scripture tells us so. But, but we have been, as believers, have been adopted into a kingdom that, that uh, there are many mansions in and one is prepared for me. And my Father created the universe that we see. And, and even though down here on this earth, I wear this fleshly cloak of humility and weakness, inside here is a king that's going to come out one day. 